wonderful pleasure for me as a staffer uh, and now as an elected working on some of these very vital issues. Back in 2009, I was chief of staff to then uh, assistant majority leader Paul Krikorian. And uh, it was, uh, some of the folks are here in the room uh, who will remember the scars of how difficult it was to try to move anything forward at that time. Um, uh, and after two or three failed attempts, we were finally able to pass the first tax credit as part of a budget negotiation in February of 2009. And it was meager, it was, uh, and it's insulting to call 100 million meager, but, but for the purposes of this industry and how big of a factor it plays in helping keep an industry in a state like this, uh, it was fairly meager. It was a drop in the bucket, and we knew that. Um, but we, it was a matter of education. It was a matter of allowing uh, all of our colleagues throughout the state see how important of a role this tax credit will play in ensuring that high-paying jobs continue to stay in California because ultimately those very p individuals who earn these incomes are going to continue paying property taxes, retail taxes, and contributing back into the fabric uh, of, of our state and our local municipalities. And for whatever reason, that argument seemed to be lost at some times. Uh, and, and so it's, it's been wonderful to see that many people agreed with that. And by the time the bill last year that was passed, that helped not only extend but build upon the original bill, received unanimous support uh, at this time. And it was no longer a fight. So, um, and, and credit goes to former Speaker Karen Bass, by the way, I should say also, as well as Assemblymember Paul Krikorian for, for having the vision to do that. Um, the tax credits work. They're extremely important. As chair of the Subcommittee on State Administration, um, I, I want to make sure that the public is educated through these hearings uh, because, unfortunately, a lot of times, tax credits uh, cr cause controversy. There's a certain level of discomfort. And so the best way to address that issue is through education. And so I feel it's important for us to have these hearings on a regular basis uh, so that individuals will be better versed on what public benefit is coming from these tax dollars that are being spent because it impacts us locally in our own communities and it has tertiary levels of, of impacts as well. Our local flower stores, our local copy stores, our um, uh, dry cleaners that are open 24 hours a day uh, because there are certain industries, specifically the entertainment industry, that needs to have certain places open around the, around the clock to be able to rely on those services to deliver the goods that they are looking for. Uh, because the days for certain folks uh, start at you know, 3, 4 in the morning when they strap on their tool belt and go to the field to start their work or to the sound studio, sound state. And the other benefit also that this gives us, these hearings give us, is it allows us an opportunity to reevaluate and assess. We knew that we had a uh, uh, imperfect, extremely imperfect tax credit the first time we we, we got it in place. Um, and the current one might well be very imperfect as well, but we're going to need to have some time to evaluate and see how it's working and then see what steps we need to take. Um, and uh, th the one thing that we didn't talk about today but is extremely important and, and something vital that we need to consider, and this I'm saying not as the chair of my subcommittee, but as someone who sees the impacts of it in my district on a daily basis, is uh, the human cost of what tearing apart families does for this industry. Uh, when you have a very rich district of individuals who live and you see your neighbors on a day in, day out basis, having to leave their family for four months at a time, five months at a time, in order to pursue their work and their craft uh, it takes a heavy toll on the family. And the costs associated with that have not been really quantified. 
but it are, they are extreme. And uh, uh, I think the fiscal impacts that we do record pale in comparison to the human costs that are involved. And so it's very important for us to also be mindful of that. <laughs>